It's like a picture from a fairy tale. Snow-capped peaks, lush green valleys. This is a view you won't find in Singapore. And all it took to get here was a 12-hour flight, two trains, and a two-hour bus ride. I'm Roz, a self-confessed travel junkie. I've been to 61 countries and counting. And now I'm heading for some really unusual. Wow, amazing. Isn't this a beautiful view? Remote. It's cold, it's wet. And even dangerous places. Is this an active volcano? All to find the only Singaporeans here. I'm on my way to a small mountain village called Lech in Western Austria. Sitting at 1,444 meters above sea level, its elevation is comparable to Kathmandu in Nepal. Lech is at the heart of the Albert mountain range that makes up a part of the Austrian Alps. That is why it's favoured by skiing enthusiasts. In fact, this was Princess Diana's favourite ski resort and where Princess William and Harry first hit the slopes. Uh, this place has about 1,600 people living here and I'm supposed to be looking for a Singaporean woman who is running a restaurant in this remote part of Austria. I don't see any restaurants. Where is Klosterle? My Wi-Fi is like not really working. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna hit the direction and knock on doors. <laughs> Okay, this looks like the best chance, so I think I'm gonna give it a shot and see who's in there. Hi! Hi! I don't wanna assume, just because you're Asian, but are you Ethel? Yeah, hi, I'm Ethel. Are you the only Singaporean here? Yes, I think so. I'm Rose, nice to meet you! Nice to meet you, Rose. Ethel moved to Lek in 2019 with her husband Jakob to run Klosterle, a restaurant housed in a refurbished 17th century farmhouse. Wow, this place is really cute. Like a house. And I noticed there's a Zhao Tai Mao, like this lucky cat. So that's you too, right? <laughs> that, is, that is my little touch. It's fun to have, it represents a little bit of, of, of me. This is the dining room. These kind of wooden dining rooms in, in your home, they would be called a Stube in German. Since the 1980s, the restaurant has been run as a traditional fondue place by the Schneiders, a family whose roots can be traced as far back as 1421 in the Aalburg region. Things changed when fourth-generation hotelier Gerald and Katja Schneider took over the management of the family business in 1997. Trained as architects, they wanted to turn Klosterle into a culinary destination for the region. And so they hired Jakob and Ethel to help them run it. Um, we only have one, two, six tables. It's also really fun when the house is full. Uh, it's a really lively kind of atmosphere. There's really good energy. Conversations flow in and out. Close to Lay opens for eight months a year during the summer and winter seasons. This year's winter season starts in about two weeks and they're in the midst of preparing ingredients for it. So we are just pressing some uh, homemade soy sauce that we made. Mm. This batch has been made with uh, lupin beans instead, which is like a, kind of like a cousin of the of the soybean. So this we've um, grown koji on with uh, toasted wheat. Put that into a salt brine and kind of let it sit and do its thing. For how long? This one has been now fermenting for just over two years. <gasps> I'm just going to bring this up to our ladder okay. and I can show you around. More nerdy things. More nerdy things. Oh, yes. <laughs> the Lupin soy sauce is an example of their cooking philosophy. 
using locally sourced ingredients to recreate flavors from all around the world. And a lot of the magic happens in here, the restaurant's larder. Whoa! <laughs> oh, this is not the best part. This is the best part. The best part, a man, a surprise man, Aust Austrian man of the day. This is Jakob, my husband, partner, fellow head chef, life and work. Oh, and, and favorite ferment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm in a jar for summer, and then I come out in winter. <laughs> they have at least 200 different types of preserves in their larder. Because fresh ingredients are hard to come by in winter, these preserved items form the backbone of their cooking. These are some carrots we fermented in summer. These are some meadow sweet buds. Um, they're a wild uh, plant that grows around here. Can you put uh, them in vinegar? Exactly, and their flowers have a, are very, very aromatic. Mm. Sweet. It, yeah, it has this um, almost like kind of bitter Syrupy. almond kind of yeah. flavor to it. What is this? Some yes. contributions from Singapore. What is this? <laughs> They're very excited to put on the menu. Yeah. This is actually a, um, a, a kind of a chili crab inspired <gasps> sauce. Okay. Uh, made primarily with oven roasted tomatoes. And then of course some lemongrass and ginger that we, we got from afar. So we have been working on a, a, some new dishes for the menu this, okay. this winter. Um, so we're just going to take a couple of these jars, I guess, and do some taste tests <laughs> on the new menu. <laughs> Yay! Precious cargo! <laughs> a year after Ethel and Jakob took over, Clos de Lay was awarded Newcomer of the Year in 2021 by French restaurant guide Gotemiu Austria, which, like Michelin, rates restaurants on the quality of food. Definitely want your opinion on it, Roz. Oh my gosh. Fellow Singaporean. Ooh. Ooh. Punch, 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 punch. Feel the heat first, and then it slowly starts to become sweet, savory. This is like a really good chili crab sauce. Thanks, Roz. The development of new dishes is actually very intuitive, so mm. the best dishes are developed while you're cooking. Because of how much Ethel and Jakob experiment, the recipes are tested before it goes onto the menu. In just two days, they will be presenting the new dishes to bosses Katia and Gerald Schneider. We have a few ideas of dishes that we would like to trial run exactly before we open. Then I get to taste. <laughs> I get to taste. Taste, 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 taste. It all depends how the dishes are received. There is a slight chance they might have to start from scratch. Yesterday, when I arrived in Lake, the grass was still green. Today, though, you know, snow is pretty until you're walking in it. It's pretty much like rain. It's cold, it's wet, and I can't wait to get some hot drink and breakfast. <laughs> On the agenda today, gathering supplies for the upcoming test dinner for bosses Katia and Gerald Schneider before the restaurant's winter season starts. But first, breakfast at Ethel's for a glimpse of their lives here in Lake. Hi! Hi, Rose. Hi! Wow, Come what a cozy in. space! I smell toast. <laughs> Hello! Hi. Hi! How are you? How are you? And you. And you. Oh my gosh. Thanks for preparing this. This. Help yourself, Ross. This out of bread, butter, kaya, of course, if you're feeling homesick already. I can see like clusterly over there. Yeah, we Hi. have the, the best view. How did you guys wind up here? In Leh? Yeah. So I left Singapore when I was 19. My father kind of pushing me to leave really? for very good reasons, I think. He was very adamant that all of his, his daughters should spend some time overseas. After completing her hotel management degree, Ethel pursued her passion for cooking at culinary arts school Le Cordon Bleu in Paris. She then worked at three Michelin star restaurant Les Amis in Singapore and eventually Fabiken, a two star restaurant in Sweden where she met Jakob. We were at Fabiken for almost three years. 
I have to say it was still one of the most inspiring places I've worked at. That was the first time I really understood like working directly with producers, um, having these farms so close by to you. It was also at Favikin that Jakob met Katia and Gerald, who ate at the restaurant. After their stint in Sweden, the couple's culinary journey took them to a Berlin bakery where they worked at for a year. Where we were looking for an opportunity uh, to get back into the restaurant industry from, from baking. Just at that point, Katia and Gerald kind of re-approached Jakob. Katia and Gerald were looking for a chef to revamp Klosterle into an experimental restaurant arm at the hotel. So they invited the couple to Lek to see if they were a good fit. And two months later, they offered us the opportunity to run Klosterle. Wow. And we just, we said yes. Kind of almost no second thought. <laughs> To show me what drew them to this little alpine village, we took a drive around town. Oh wow, is that a heart shape over there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god, Instagram spot. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Before you guys came to Leh, like what were your expectations of this town? I just heard like a luxurious ski area. Okay. And for me that sounded very unattractive because I didn't see at that point now she's more into skiing than me. I can't wait. <laughs> I think that's the big luxury about living in a place like Leh. The mountains are your backyard. Yeah. Um, and it's so nice to be able to have that as part of your daily life. But no time to enjoy the mountains for me because we've got work to do. Okay. We're ready. Here we go. Goats are coming. <laughs> Over there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going! Oh my Keep God. going, so good, so good! Keep going! Go, go, go! Go, go! <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> Bye! These goats, they belong to the Held family. Fourth generation farmers living 40 kilometers outside Lake. 90% of the meat on Klosterle's menu comes from this family's farm. Um, but they produce their own feed themselves, mm. so all the hay that is fed, they, he, he cuts it and dries it himself. The Held family practice something called closed-loop farming. Animal waste is used to grow grass, which is in turn used to feed the animals. This sustainable farming method limits the number of animals they can rear, setting them apart from other farmers in the region. While husband Reiner works on the farm... Hello. 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 <laughs> wife Manuela specializes in dairy products. Manuela makes the cheese they sell at the market. Um, this is Schafkäse. I love goat's cheese. Mm. Oh my god. I mean, to describe it, basically it tastes like yogurt, but a very mild yogurt. Oh, it's yummy. Is Ethel the only Singaporean you've met? Uh, <laughs> but have you met any other Singaporeans before Ethel? <laughs> now I'm the second one. <laughs> Sustainability is a key part of Ethel and Jakob's cooking philosophy. So they only work with farms with similar values, even if it can cost up to four times as much. Okay, so where are we going to next? We're going to, to visit Simon, uh, a good friend of ours down in Lufthansa now, um, that we get all our vegetables from. It took three months and countless visits to farmers' markets before they found vegetable farmer Simon Vetter. Hello! <laughs> what are these vegetables? They, they look familiar, but, but different. Not. Yeah. Different. Same, same, but different. Yes. 
Why did you choose to work with Simon out of all the vegetable farmers in this area? Off at the first sight. At the first sight. I think I just the quality of the produce is, is, is speaks for itself. And there's always new vegetables coming in, trial um, for a season. You're like the Willy Wonka of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Simmons' family were pioneers in organic farming in Western Austria, a practice which Simon maintains through the use of crop rotation and green manure to keep his fields fertile. We are headed to the fields to see what he has growing for the season that we can use for the upcoming test dinner. The radicchios. You try it? Yeah, let me try some. Mm. Ridiculous. <laughs> Each season, Ethel and Jakob adapts the menu to Simmons produce. So this is black kale or Nero di Toscana, and you can basically uh, break down the leaves. Like oh, wow. Just the bigger ones. Mm. It's kale. Oh, it's good. I think it's the most tasty kale. It's like Kailan. Mm. Is this enough for you guys? Yeah, I think this is good for what we're going to cook. Tomorrow, it's D-Day, where all the ingredients we've gathered will come together in the test menu. I just hope Katya and Gerald will like it. Be kind. If not, it's back to the drawing board. Today is the big day where bosses Katya and Gerald will be tasting new dishes on Ethel and Jakob's winter menu. But first, we have one more item to pick. We can check out this spot here. Leg has no shortage of pine forests, and we're foraging for pines, but not for decorative reasons. They're actually going into the menu. Um, you want something that's a very, really kind of dark, deep green. Okay. Um, and not this kind of uh, oxidized yellow green. Yeah. Because it really affects the color of the oil. Can you, Can see, you see the, the difference? difference? Yeah. Keeping in line with their philosophy of sustainability, mm. foraging is a major part in their cooking process. We forage for mushrooms in the summer and mm. in the fall, a lot of wild herbs in early spring. I think it shows a sense of place, first of all, but it also brings out so many different flavors. Oh, I like the sound of that. Yeah, oh, it smells so nice. Oh. <laughs> it's like a, being in a sauna. I still can't imagine this being food, so <laughs> I can't wait to see how this is getting transformed. For this tasting menu, Ethel and Jakob are putting together eight dishes, spread across three courses, or what they call waves of food, with each wave comprising of two to three dishes. I've offered to be a part of the kitchen crew. Jakob, you can take care of the filling. Roz is working on the pine. pine. Yes, chef. <laughs> <laughs> Louder! Yes, chef! <laughs> yes, chef! With just two and a half hours before the guests arrive, I've been given the task of preparing the pine oil. First, I have to snip the needles off the branches. If you make it into like smaller pieces mm -hmm. first. Heat them up in oil until it's fragrant. Okay. Wow, there's smoke coming out. Yeah, smell. Wow. And then strain it. Oh my god, the smell is insane. And just what is this pine oil used for? Something that reminds me of home. Gue Dada. I've added in some pine oil. Is it strange that I'm getting like a smell of a hit of pandan? I like that you say that because that was kind of the idea. We've been thinking of what, what is a good substitute for pandan because it's something you definitely cannot get here. Yeah. It's mind-blowing because I would never look at pine and think pandan. <laughs> so far from Both it. Green. In addition to replacing pandan with pine oil, Ethel also used grated chestnuts instead of desiccated coconut. This is pretty nice! Soon, Katya and Gerald, along with their friends Marcus and Angelica, and the hotel's head chef Gerhard, arrive for the taste test. Okay, let's do it. Crunch time, crunch time. <laughs> okay. 
Today's dinner will be comprised of entirely new dishes. Whether the dishes, such as the chili crab sauce, makes it on the menu for the winter season, will be determined by how well it's received. House. Hi, everybody. And enjoy your food and bread. You are our test diners today. Okay. Mm. Be kind. <laughs> this dish in white is a new dish that we're trying to thinking of putting on the winter menu. So it's a kohlrabi roll um, filled with uh, sautéed cabbage, carrots, and pumpkin from Seaman. Um, a sauce made from sheep yogurt from the Health family, uh, chive oil, lupin soy solids, and fried chalet. So I will leave you in the hands of uh, Ross. Please enjoy. Hi! Hi Ross. Back in civilian. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Salut! And it looks very healthy. Wow, this dish is amazing. For their second wave of dishes, Ethel and Jakob are serving potatoes cooked in the lupin soy sauce that were fermenting for two years. And chili crab sauce served over grilled carp and vegetables. Ethel, this chili crab is so good. Thank you, Rod. Mm. Special. I like it. And finally, desserts, which includes the kue dada that I helped to make. What do you think of the meal? I loved it. It was delicious, beautiful. Approve? Um, total approve. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does Ethel and Jakob's food differ from whatever is around this region? Ethel's influence, Asian influence. Mm -hmm. um, all techniques of preserving. Um, it's not fancy in a way. It's also how it's served here. Comfort. In the end, all the dishes were a hit and will likely be added this coming winter season. But I'm bringing out one more off-menu item for today's dinner. <laughs> I've got a surprise for you guys! <laughs> we decided to bring like Singapore's number one pandan chiffon. <laughs> Just for you guys. <laughs> Yeah. You can have this. <laughs> no, cheats! <laughs> <Whoa. Whoa. laughs> yeah. Whoa, look at that face of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> So after spending the past few days with Ethel, for her and Jakob to move to the town of Lech, I think it goes beyond this fantastic work opportunity to run their restaurant or being surrounded by pristine nature. I think it ultimately boils down to purpose and community for them. I can't wait to be back in this town to actually be a proper diner in Klosterle.